Hey guys. Glad to see you. Hello out there. <laughs> I just want to give a couple a couple messages. Um, I, I thought that it, this would be worth mentioning. Um, I've been you know, oftentimes if you're like nervous to get a remote reading, it's so funny because almost I don't know. 60% of the time, about 60% of the time when I first get on the phone with you, it's like, oh my gosh, it's like talking to a celebrity. Like, <laughs> I'm so nervous. <laughs> and by the end of our talk, um, a lot of times it's like, oh my gosh, I'm so relieved. And I'm so glad that I did this because it, it felt like talking to a best friend. And I feel so much so much um, safer or, or reassured. And it really just anchored in my belief in myself because a lot of the things that you said were things that I already knew or, and I was already starting to implement. And so it just gave, it gives you the confidence that you're like on the right track a lot of the times. And that's exactly the message that spirit's trying to drive home to everybody right now is to listen to your intuition, like even I get in, in, in my, my tribe chat, um, on telegram, which is now public. All, I think all group, all of my chat groups are now public. <laughs> so if you just look up Amy Satori on telegram, you should be able to find me pretty easily. Um, but even you guys get into these debates, I'll say, well, you know, I, I felt this, that, and this with a certain subject and everybody will spin out on all these, like, well, I watched this and I heard that and, did, 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 did. and I'm like, you guys should know by now <laughs> that you, and you really need to be listening to your intuition. And I'm about to do a talk on this, on listening to your intuition. Um, another one, like a, re like a renewal or a revitalization of the divine guidance council meeting. And I'm going to put some of my important um, messages up on, or some of my important videos that I always reference in on my website sometime soon. Anyway, um, forming your own opinion about something while you're watching somebody and just even kind of like, Oh, I don't like that guy. Sometimes it's your intuition and sometimes it's your bias. So you even have to refine that just because you don't like somebody when you first start to listen to them or something like that doesn't mean that you actually sensed that they were bad or that, you know, you, so you have to learn to refine those abilities so that you become less and less reactive and kind of emotional in your decision and you, and you more respond intuitively. And to that note, these messages that I give you guys, like pretty much every time I get on a video, I'm channeling. That's because I'm in a synchronistic flow with the universe. And that's just how, how magical that is. And um, the mistakes that I make, it, it may, uh, it's not a mistake. So if spirit speaks over me and makes me stumble over my words, for example, or, or I say something that's like, whoa, I meant to say this and it ended up coming out that, um, it's no mistake. It means that either the collective or some specific pocket of people that it was really important that they get that message, hear that instead of the original message. And one of the things that had come up in um, one of the great awakenings may have been the last one. I think it was the last one. I started to talk about how we were um, that we were going to inherit this earth and we were going to stay here. Cause that's what I hear a lot. And sometimes I haven't felt anything into things with my intuition or I forget you know, and then you hear other people's things and it gets intermingled in there and then you get confused. I know a lot of you are as confused as me when it's like, what, what the heck's going to happen with this whole transition? Are we staying? Are we going? Like, what the heck? <laughs> There's so many different things said out there and I'm going to look into that closer as we go. But um, I said, I, I, I meant to say, and that we're staying, but I ended, what ended up coming out of my mouth is when we are taken. So, and that idea is, um, is like from a dream that I had even, and I feel like spirit was trying to tell me back then that we are going to be taken. And even the idea of what's been predicted in the Bible is that you will disappear. You'll be alongside your partner working in the field and boom, one of you is gone. So, um, you know, people of a lower, lower vibration are going to be left here on this earth, which makes a lot of sense because it's already pretty much destroyed. And then, you know, people who are of a, 
of a better vibration, uh, not better. Well, yeah, well, better feeling better, you know, even a higher vibration, they're going to just be plucked. Boom. Like in my dream that you guys have probably heard a million times where I was at a party and I went to get an item out of the pantry. And when I went to turn around to go back into the party, um, I disappeared and I went into a meadow, a really beautiful meadow that was just, it felt like heaven or something. And I remember going, Oh, this must be the new earth. And I looked around and thought, okay, well, I better find some other people. So I think that was a big hint and a clue as to what's going to be going on with us. And some people, if you look at in my telegram group, there was a talk that somebody did about astrology and it combined astrology and, um, and what was it? The Bible, sorry. (laughs) And it, it was a really good talk, but he, he had pretty much come to the conclusion that we're going to be taken uh, June 15th of this year. We can only hope. (laughs) And I really do feel if we go, if we go, we're not going to be missing our loved ones. We're not even going to remember them or anything. It's going to be like just wiped from us. So don't worry about that. Let go, let, let go and let God seriously, like it'll be worth it. Trust me, (laughs) just let go and surrender everything and anyone that you're attached to in your life. Cause you'll want to go where we're going. It's, it's incredible. Okay. So, um, Uh, let's see, what was I going to say? Okay. So the other thing was, I was going to say when I'm, when I'm questioning a guest, when I'm asking, Hey, what would you do in a stressful situation? Or how did you cope with this? Or what would you suggest people do if this, you know, and I'm asking their advice, I'm not actually asking it for me. You, I'm sure you guys know that, but, um, and I, and I may not even agree with what they say to do. They may say, go hide under a blanket and put it over your head. If you're scared, (laughs) you know, and I would be like, Oh, okay. Uh Oh, that's, that's only one way to do it. So I, um, I'm going to listen with a very open mind as to what my guests say. So just know that um, when I'm asking them, I'm just getting another opinion of another individual who does things different than I do, or that you do, or that we do. So it's always interesting to find out what people say. What, what do you do to cope with this? What do you do with this? What do you do? Da, da, da. So Um, And I think we all need to be, try to be, strive to be very open-minded that way. Like listen to what will ask people questions and just get to know what they do and what they say about certain topics and things and be really open-minded. Don't argue your point and don't need to be right. Hold your tongue and just be like, huh, that's really interesting. That's really interesting. I'll have to ponder that. I'll have to, you know, um, yeah it's a mark of intelligence to be able to hold your own, your own wisdom and to assimilate new information. And you either decide to take it on and you, or you can even take on a little tiny piece of it or the whole thing or not at all, but not in any kind of judgment. It's like, this fits for me. This doesn't. Okay. That feels good. And then you just keep going, you know? So, um, and then the other thing is that, um, Yes. Um, Before I do the great awakening videos, a lot of times I even want to know the answers and I don't know them. So when Shanti and I get together and we talk on the, on the phone before we do these, you know, she compiles all of your questions that are in the world questions group. She also comes up with her own questions because she does a lot of research for us. Thank you, Shanti. Um, And so, and she's going to, she's going to come on, soon (laughs) and be a part of a round table. So I'm really excited. You guys get to see her beautiful face. Um, So basically you just, um, you, you, what was I going to say? I totally lost my place. That was so funny. Oh, that I, that we talk on the phone for hours and she never asked me like, so what do you feel or what do you sense about this? She just, she just says, well, here's the topic of the day and here's what's being said about it. Here, are, here's what, what I think, or here's what da, 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 da. she'll just give me a rundown on all these various topics and things like that. Or she won't, she'll just be like, I have no idea. Here's the question that somebody posted. Um, you know, so we just, we just run down it all, but I don't feel into it at the time. And um and then, so when I get on these, when I get on these videos, I go into the, I, I get, I get really in touch with spirit. And then I just ask, 
And it may be the full picture that you're getting from what comes through for me, or it could be a piece that's added to what you heard from some other truther. Maybe this person says this, and then I feel in a gap that you didn't know before, or maybe, you know, so take all of that into consideration that, um, yeah, that I don't feel into these beforehand and it's not opinion and it's not bias. This is pure intuition when I'm doing these channelings. Okay. And even when I do these talks, uh, so many of you are still used to being in the 3d world and you're not, you don't, uh, you think that I'm, I'm coming out of opinion or this is my, this is, or whatever. So just try to, just try to, try to use your own intuition more so that you, so that you can feel and sense that I'm coming from that intuitive place. And just know that when you're in the flow with the universe, the right things will come out of your mouth. Even if it's, even if uh, it's stumbly or if it it's scattered or, you know, however anybody might see it that might feel like judging it or whatever it's, it's being sputtered out by spirit. So it's like, <laughs> It's like you're a puppet for spirit and spirit fills you up and just puts the, if the more in flow you are, the more it's like the, the words just flow out of your mouth. And most times I don't remember what I even say in these things. So you, if you were to ask my opinion tomorrow or in a couple of days, Hey, what do you think about this, that, and the other thing I'd be like, I don't know, I guess, you know, this, that, and the other thing, you know, if I wasn't in my, if I wasn't being intuitive at the time, I'd be like, well, maybe this, that, and the other thing, da, 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 da. And then you might say like, um, the, or then I might say like, well, did you watch my video on that? Cause that'll tell you, you know, <laughs> like I'm another person. I'll go talk to my higher self when she did that video a couple of days ago. She'll tell you, you know, it's really funny. <laughs> my relationship with my higher self is pretty funny. But I sometimes, you know, I've sometimes gotten in fear and, and been like, well, what did I say about that? I'll even say to my friends, like, what did I say about that? Well, I don't remember. Or, oh, you know, you said this, that, and the other thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> so there's like two Amy's here. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm like the Celeste Amy. Celeste is my higher self. So I'm the Celeste Amy. The other one is, is Amy Satori. Or maybe I'm Amy Satori Celeste. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> who puts labels on things anymore anyway <sighs> all right so um I don't know if I'm going to split this up or just do one long one or if it'll be shorter than I'm thinking but I'm just going to go ahead and just do it I'm just going to run through these and if I have to divide them up I will all right so I'm just going to get centered right now and you guys can do that too, because we just rattled off a bunch of information. And now let's just relax. <sighs> also, I know that if an, if an any animal, most likely a cat, or any kind of noise happens in the background or cat meows or anything like that, that, that happens during these videos, it's confirmation of something. And it could be specifically what they're doing or the fact that they're doing something at all. So, okay. And, and for that matter, your animals, your, whoever's in your background. And if you hear a chime when something goes off or somebody sneezes at the same time, or like start paying attention to the subtle things that are going on in your life and in the background of these videos too. Um, Cause it all starts to feel like a symphony. It all starts to speak to you. Spirit speaks to you that way. Okay. Our, uh, our, okay, first question. <laughs> Are our animals ascending with us? Uh, I'm feeling that a lot of them are actually uh, ascended or, or higher than we are. They're already at a higher level. I mean, it, it's like we're playing catch up, trying to get up to where they are. And it's because they have so much peace and presence within them that they, they're already up there. Um, so, um, and sometimes when I might have set questions, but I'll just start asking more questions because I, I want to know. <laughs> so what if we, are we, so it, is it true that we're going to like leave this earth? Yes. If we're going to go to a brand new earth that's squeaky clean. Oh, it's, so it's going to be like the best version of planet earth possible. And we're going to go there and it's going to be, is it an assimilation? Like a simulation? Yeah. It, I mean, this is too though. 
So is this a simulation? Yeah, it's all simulated. It's all, I don't know how, I don't know how or who's behind it all. <laughs> a holographic simulation, somehow, UFO or something. I don't know, who knows? <laughs> Just have an open mind. We will figure a lot of it out soon. In okay. So um, yeah, we're going to go to some kind of new earth and our, our, our minds can be wiped clean. When we, when we get to the new earth, uh, our, 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 if, if need be, they said, if need be and some of us, actually, when we get to the new earth, are going to have new bodies and everything. It'll be amazing. Like totally healthy, happy, younger bodies. Uh, like when you get to heaven, it's, it's a lot like heaven, actually. It might be as a, I, I've always felt that heaven was a place like that anyway, that you just kind of go, it, it, I think we might be going to heaven. I just got to guess. It's like the way that we label things is so different right now. Like, are we, oh my gosh, this is so great. This is, and this is coming into a different talk. <clears throat> I, I kind of want to go there, but I don't, because I think we should explore it like another time. Like what, it, what that's going to happen to like, just know that it's going to be painless. You guys. Okay. Don't you're going to just be here one minute, the next minute you're going to be there and you'll probably be looking for me, <laughs> you know, and we'll find each other. Okay. <laughs> just know that. And it's going to be peaceful and it's going to be joyful. And it's going to, you know, you're going to have maybe have a brand new body and everything. It's going to feel, I mean, we're going to, I feel every time I tap into it, it's like a celebration, just a big celebration. We made it. I just heard we made it. So uh, yeah, it sounds very exciting. So don't worry about any, any of the details of that. Okay. So when we, when we, uh, okay. Yeah. I, I feel you guys, I, I, can, I can hear you guys asking the questions in your mind or even out loud right now. When we go there and when we ascend to this new earth or whatever, are our past animals that we once loved very much going to be there? Oh yes. So we're going to heaven. We're going to heaven. So in a way, could you, is it, is, <laughs> I mean, I hate to ask it like this, but is it kind of like the light workers are going to pass away? Kind of like that. Kind of like that. But wait, uh, so it's all, in, it's like, it, it feels like it's all so illusory anyway. So if, if really kind of, it's like we're in hell right now, they're saying, yes, it's like we're in hell on this earth being having been programmed and all this stuff by the bad guys so we're we're like stuck in kind of like a hell and we're gonna be taken to heaven so awesome it's like we're already dead or something and then we're gonna be taken to another level <laughs> so, so trippy <laughs> i've never thought of it like this you guys i've never thought of it like this and I don't even want to go there because we're sticking to animals today. Okay. Um, just yeah. Open mind, open heart about all of it. Do all animals, bugs included have a soul? Absolutely. Yes. Yes, they do. Um, try to put your bugs outside. Don't squash them. Um, it's like, I don't know. Like what, what, what about like when your cats go after bugs and stuff like that? It's like, what can you do? I mean, just, you know, and, things will change and evolve the way they're supposed to later, but let's not have any judgment about any of it. Um, so, cause that's another objective right now is to not judge anything or anybody. Okay. So just let things be as they are. Don't give yourself a hard time if something dies or if, you know, something like that. It's not about guilt tripping or judging. Okay. <laughs> if the, if you can rescue the bug, awesome. And if it gets killed, that's okay too. Cause it was meant to be, and it was all supposed to happen. So just let it be what it is. A radical acceptance of everything right now. Okay. So yes, they, they do. Oh, a soul though. So they have a consciousness is the way that I would put it. They have a consciousness every, in fact, inanimate objects also have consciousness. You can talk to a lamp. You can talk to a fan. You can talk to whatever you can talk to your hand. You, you can talk to anything. Um, so yeah. Uh, what about soul though? Does the, does like the bug have a, I would, I would actually say, yeah, to, uh, fragments of a soul or something, even pieces of a soul, I guess sometimes. Um, but they are able to, they are also able to go up levels or change levels or things like that. Like I, I saw a, 
I saw a video on Instagram where a dog was watching a sunset and I had the thought that it's because when it was a person before it used to love sunsets. So now as a dog and he would think usually it's a dog that goes to a human. So it may have been somebody who had to go backwards. Like maybe they cheated a lot on somebody. And so then they were kind of put through a simulation of them being a dog so that they could, um, you know, be loyal, be completely undyingly loyal and but they still love the sunsets you know stuff like that um how can we best support our pets right now how can we best support our pets right now i see petting um okay one thing you can do right now is um i am going to speak to your pets and i'm going to show how show them how to properly process uh your feelings because a lot of animals will take on your fears, your worries and things like that. They'll take it into themselves and it turns into cancer tumors and all kinds of stuff. They take our stuff on and a lot of them don't understand how to pass the energy through, at least what I found. Um, so let me instruct them right now. Your animal does not necessarily have to be in the room to hear this right now. I'm just going to set the intention. Everything works by intention. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to, so just by you watching this video, your animal is now going to, to have a little talking to you about how to properly um, eliminate your feelings when they come through. And what I usually tell them is to poop or pee it out. Um, you know, so I'm just going to give them the idea that they don't hold on to the energy and kind of take it on and kind of make it like a burden for themselves there to go out and get it out or make you laugh. Like a, I, I, I teach a lot of them to instead of like kind of cowering and being afraid of you when you're in a bad mood or anything like that, like make you laugh, like try to make you laugh and to slough it off and go outside and poop or pee or whatever, whatever they got to do or run around or shake it off or whatever. So, okay. The idea is they got to get the energy out of them and they need to not take it personally. Okay. Okay. Sa la kihe in a hot boom 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 jeans. Ha ha again, sa sa shiki la ha dante. Titi chin 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 a ha ike. Ha ha pa uhuma hama ana haike in sa sena a he e. They're like, okay, all right, all right, got it, cool, okay. Like they feel more confident. They feel, they feel better. They feel relieved. They just said they feel relieved. Okay, cool, all right. Um, so, and, and, um, and uh, the reason that it went there is because when you pet an animal, sometimes they take on your energy. So I said, how do you best support them? And I said, pet them. And then I saw the, and your energy going into them. And then I was like, well, we better take care of them. So, um, yeah, pet them, uh, reassure them, tell them what's going on. And please know that your animals actually hear you. They understand what you're saying. One of my animals in particular, not going to say any names, but if I talk about her, I mean, I see her whole, everything about her change. She lowers her head like this, her tail goes down and she, she kind of slinks around and won't be around me so much anymore. And she, and she really gets her feelings hurt really bad, really easy. So I have to be like, so careful. I'll even like leave the house or I'll go talk to a friend on the phone outside or in my car while I'm driving because I don't want her to hear me. It's that bad. <laughs> and that, that did not come from me. I'm the adopted mom. Whatever happened to her beforehand was really tough for her. So it's just made her very, very sensitive. So just keep that in mind that they do hear what you're saying. And a lot of times, I mean, uh, one of my, one of my other of the two, <laughs> she is like, she really takes on language. She, she gets, she's practically a parrot. I mean, the things like I hear her speak English. So I even like will pick something up and I'll say this pen, you know, and I'll, I'll go over to snacks. I'll say snack. I'll point to snack, you know, 
because then I'll see her end up using the word sometime. And it, it, it's shocking, but it's amazing. They're absorbing. They're just like little children. You guys, they're totally like little children and they will hide their pain. So you have to learn to be very observant of your animals because they can even give you an indication of a weather change. They can tell you whether something scary is about to happen Um, you know, so know what your animal does in different situations and be, be an observer of your animals, um, get to know their patterns, get to know when they feel bad versus when they feel happy, when cats are happy, their tail is, is straight up. And, um, and when they're scared, they kind of hunker down or their tails go, go out or, you know, there's so, so many different things. Watch a video, watch a video on, um, uh, you know, cat, cat behavior or cat, what do you call it? Um, postures, you know, and dog postures, find out, you know, learn their language better. So many people just buy a pet and just have them around. And that's so irresponsible, you know, (laughs) and have money. If you're going to have a pet, you should have money to be able to spend three to $5,000 on a surgery because that could very easily happen at any moment. So please, if you can't afford to pay for a major surgery for a pet, do not have any pets or, you know, or have a backup plan. If my pet has something that needs to happen, I already know of a place that will, that has a sliding scale, or I know of somebody who would pay for it, or I know of, you know, GoFundMe page that I know that I could get on real quick. I've already learned how to do it and I could go real quick to go get that money you know, whatever, have a plan because, uh, again, like we got to be responsible stewards of our, of our animals. Um, and here, here is another thing. If, if, if your cat is in the backyard or in the yard and you hear birds chirping at them or something like that, pay attention to the wildlife too, because if there's a bunch of birds and they start gathering around your animal, like your animals in a bush or a tree or something like that. And you, these birds start bar, 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 and there are more and more birds keep coming and they're, bar, 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 bar. they're really bothering your, your animals really bothering those, those birds and the, and the natural habitat that they're all in. So get your animals out of there, you know, go in and be the, the steward, and come in and, 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 you know, round them up and get them to get out of the area safely. And then you'll also observe that the birds relax and they're not chirping anymore and, and they dissipate and they go somewhere else because there's no more alarming situation for them. So pay attention to all of it, you know? Okay. Are there any animals that the negative ETs brought to this planet? Well, I just want to say real quick that I, I actually saw an experience um, where I had a good friend of mine, a good guy friend of mine had just got a kitten and um, I think he must've adopted her because she was a little bit, a little bit older. Anyway, um, I was observing her one day and I noticed a string coming off of her and going up. And I was like, well, what the heck is this? And I even said to him and he's, he was more spiritual, like, so I could talk frankly with him. And I said, why does she have a string off of her that's going up? And I followed the string and there was a little, it looked like a little mini UFO or like a, now that I, now that I've seen them in those Tartaria pictures, it was like a bubble. Like the people were in that, in the bubbles or whatever. It was like a, there was a bubble. And I was like, what? And it was, but there were all these controls, like, like, like somebody was in there with these controls and going dur, 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 and beep, beep, beep and stuff like that. And when they saw me that I saw them, they stopped and they froze just like, like demons will do that too in your body, like lower, lower astral entities. They'll go. Err. Um, so I looked and they were like, uh, she sees me, you know, like, what do I do? And so I was like, what are you doing? You know? And I got the idea that they were gathering information. So they were observing through the cat's eyes. <laughs> I don't know if all animals are spies or just cats or both, or, I mean, I know that cats are like, um, you know, psychic protectors. Uh, and, and maybe that's why maybe the ETs, you know, they're watching our environment and kind of keeping an eye out on things for us. And if they see anything abnormal, it gets reported to the, uh, you know, the Arcturians or the Lemurians and they like send somebody down to help with the, 
with the issue. I mean, I can't think of a better way for them to keep an eye on things, you know, closely than to send some kind of like their little cameras or something like the little cats and dogs or cameras, who knows? Um, I think that there, you know, everything is consciousness and everything is one. So God is always looking at, at, at everything through all of our eyes. Remember the autistic girl that was looking through my eyes in the mirror in that video? Um, same idea. Um, but it's instead of it just being telepathic, it's more virtual. It's, it's, it's more real, you would think. And they can also gauge how you are treating your animals, right? So they can see if you're a kind, loving person or not. Or if you're impatient and you snap at them and, and, you know, they can kind of gauge people's emotions that way too. So keep an eye that there could be ETs watching you and your temper with your animal. <laughs> Another good idea to treat them well, you know? Um, okay. So are there any animals that the negative ETs brought to this planet? Uh, yes. I, um, I feel like I see a spider. I see spider like tarantulas. I don't know if all spiders, but like, is it all spiders? Eventually it was all spiders. I don't think it started that way or something, but some spiders were replaced. There may have been like good spiders or something and they got replaced by these bad spider, like robot spiders. I've seen robot kind of uh, were what I, what I called robot insects. You know, I've had them watch me before and I've known what they were and I've seen them in my room and I've been like, get the hell out of here. And they vanish. They totally disappear. <laughs> it's like, whoa. <laughs> um, so stuff like that. There's there's so many trippy things out there because we're in the Truman Show. So there's so many trippy things out there. But yeah, so definitely there are uh, insects and and uh, even like other animals that were tainted with and they they became aggressive. You know, like they weren't originally that aggressive. And I feel like they were, they were made to be more aggressive. The grizzly just jumped in my head. Maybe they tainted a uh, grizzly DNA to make them uh, hostile or something when they, when they weren't before. I don't know. They, something like that. I feel like it's too big to go into. And I feel like a lot of people don't even know about it. Cause I didn't know until just now that that had been that, but. Um, and it makes sense too why why when we're remember how uh, how I felt into the new earth and how there we would get along with wild animals and stuff. Maybe it's the wild animals how they were meant to be, how they were made to be initially, and we and the, those uh, you know the nefarious people how they've been effing with us in every area of our lives, in every way nook and cranny. <laughs> you know, why would they leave wild animals out? Of course they would F with wild animals and make them come after us. <laughs> it's like, gosh, steroids. I just got steroids. Maybe even putting steroids in lakes and things. I mean, oh my gosh, chemtrails. <sighs> this, this whole thing is just maddening. The more that you learn, like, it's just, it's, it, isn't it though? It's like, Good Lord. It, they stopped at nothing. They stopped at nothing. All right. Um, do animals get to go to the 5D? Yes. Um, can our animals read our minds? Yes, they can. Especially images and things. I have these pet cards. <laughs> I have these pet cards that crack me up sometimes. I'm like, I don't even want to look. I don't, I don't want to look. I don't want to know. Because yeah, you really hear it. It's like, oh, I don't like that person you're always thinking about or that you're talking about. It's like, I didn't ask your opinion. <laughs> or I don't like how they treat you. They're always, they always make you cry. I want you to be happy. So these cards, these are my pet cards. But they, um, yeah, they'll, they'll, tell you, they'll tell you stuff that you're just like, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. But this one I like. You make me smile inside. So uh, they don't. OK, so there's something called anthropomorphism that you learn in positive reinforcement training. All animals need stimulation and training of some sort. OK, they're so much smarter than we give them credit for. And they really want to know that they're doing a good job for you. They take pride in doing a good job for you. So please take the time to just spend a few minutes every day training them to do something and giving them treats and praise and whatever else, whatever method you want to use, hopefully not punishment. Um, but anthropomorphism is like thinking that your animal has a conscience. 
thinking that your animal knows right from wrong, according to you, and that they, that they know the, the wrong thing to do. They don't. They're animals. They have instincts and they go do animal type stuff. <clears throat> you know, like when they bring in a bug or a mouse or those dead things into your house and put it on your bed, they actually think they're giving you a gift. And you could be like all acting like they're a human and be like, ah, you know, you don't like me because you came and put a mouse on my bed. It's like, no, you got to think like a cat or you're going to think like an animal. You got to think like a bird or you got to think like a horse. Um, so don't don't treat your animals bad for any reason. They're not doing anything malicious to you. They are pure spirited sweethearts and they are never stubborn. They just don't understand what you're asking them to do. So you're the dummy in the situation, just so you know, okay? You're always the dummy in the situation. If your animal is frustrating you or you feel like it's being stubborn, you're the one who needs to take some lessons. You're the one who needs to read a book. You're the one who needs to watch some videos on that behavior so you can figure it out and then you can gain the confidence and you can gain the abilities and the skills and whatever you need to in order to teach your animal not to do that anymore in a positive way that keeps rapport built and trust between the two of you or three or four or five or 10 million or whatever. <laughs> So you make them smile. You should watch me. You should watch me with a spy cam. So some of you have stuff going on that you don't know, like when you're not there, like there's some stuff going on. Um, I'm, aw I'm aware I'm serving a divine purpose in being a part of your life. So I guess this is tur turning into a, a little bit of a messages from your animals. I understand what you say to me most of the time. When we're not together. I think of you and feel all warm and fuzzy. I can't wait to see you again. <clears throat> okay. And I will say something about crate training and dogs. Dogs love crates, but you got to get them used to that. And you got to get them liking it. You have to be the one that forms a positive association with them in their crate. But once you do, they will love the crate. They will feel so much safer in a crate than they, than they do even in their bed or, or whatever. It'll be their go-to place to escape and, and it'll be the, like their little sanctuary. So please, if you don't have a crate for your dog, get a, get a crate for it. It'll, you'll be so glad that you did. It becomes their own little den or crate or something. or not crate, <laughs> a den or cave or something. And then you put a, put a blanket over it too. So it's just like their own little... For that matter, cats like to have a place to escape too, or many places <clears throat> to kind of tuck in away too, or go underneath something. Or <clears throat> so I like to make like for my cats, I like to make all kinds of little places. Like I, I get the, I get a crate that you like a carrier crate, and I tuck them away all over the place so that they 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 have so much fun because they dive in and they go into that hole and they go over into that hole and then they jump at each other out of that hole and you know it's just kind of fun. Okay. Yeah. Make, make your animals lives fun if as possible. Oh, and this too, for any of you who have a mixed cat and dog household, it's really a good idea. And we never think of our animals like this. We never prioritize them like this, but it's, it would be so entertaining for you and your animals and fun to watch and fun to be a part of. If you could get some shelves around the the main room, like the living room, <clears throat> get some shelves around so your cats can get through the room and out the door or to their food or to their potty place without having the dogs mess with them. So it, yeah, just put like different shelves throughout, like strategically placed so that your cats can totally navigate all these areas, all these important areas and get to their things without getting messed with. Um, and then it's kind of fun too to watch the cats like run through the, you know, run across the, the bookshelves and jump over and do the, you know, so, and the dogs will, you know, it, it, it'll be entertainment for everybody. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Will our pets who've passed away be on the 5, 5D earth when we get there? Yeah. By what mechanism are animals able to sense that some people are safe to be around? Okay. <clears throat> It's, it has to do with telepathy. And if you're ever trying to train your animal to, for that matter, since they can read your mind, it's not like words that they see. And it's not even, um, how do you explain it? 
uh, they see images, they see a lot of images and they, and they, um, they've kind of figured it out. Like they can feel emotions and they can see pictures. So if you're trying to convey an idea to them, um, just think in terms of pictures and feelings, feel the feeling and put the picture it, or if you, if you're going to be going through a major change and you want to reassure them, show them what that's going to look like. Show them having fun in the car, driving, um, show them in the new place, having fun, running around, um, you know, just give them these, these good, good vibes and good feelings um, so that they understand that they're going into a positive situation. Um, so, but there is a mechanism, there is a, a telepathic type mechanism that fairies use even fair all animals also have like a guardian uh, a gu little guardian fairy that hangs around and helps them to kind of um, also slough off any bad feelings and things like that but um, they also get them to, to be like they'll be like go go do something funny for your person or something like that so they'll give them the idea to go do that or if they're trying to get food and your their bowl is empty and the owner doesn't know or realize it yet the fairy will be like why don't you go tickle their feet or jump on their feet or something like that. So the, the fairies kind of help them to do what they need to do to get what they need to do to get done, done. <laughs> um, but fairies can like scan somebody. They'll just go and they can tell how good they are to people, how good they are to uh, animals and how good they are to uh, old people, animals and children. They can tell and they can tell if you pick up litter things like that. Like if you do, if you're a good earth steward and you take care of nature, it will show up. I don't know what they see. What I'm seeing that they see is actually colors. It looks like it's colors, colors and shimmers and things. It's really interesting. Kind of like a, like that, uh, that aura quartz that I showed you guys the other day. I don't have it here right now. There's not that I can see, <clears throat> but the aqua aura quartz, it's like dipped in. It's going to kind of like got this uh, essence to it, like this real pretty uh, iridescent um, glow to it. It's like they can see, they can, they can just tell, they can scan you and they can tell if you're, if you're a kind person. Um, so animals can kind of do the same thing. I feel like with animals, it's a little bit different than the fairies. Um I just got the word refined. Um, I feel like dogs can even see what you've done to other animals and stuff. Like dogs can see the memory of it, of you beating an animal or you, or the thoughts you've had to like, you've wanted to hurt animals and stuff. They'll see that and they'll growl at you or whatever. Cause they'll be like, ah, I know what you're up to. I know the types of things you think about us. Um, so if your if your animal ever growls at or tries to get away from a person or is afraid of a person, unless I mean if the animal's already super paranoid, you know, then don't then don't throw this out. But if your animal is usually pretty cool headed, meeting new people and stuff, and they and they growl and they want it, they don't want anything to do with that person or whatever. That's I would pay attention to that. I would definitely pay attention to that. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Um, let's see. Does the food we're feeding our pets cause them illness? Yes, of course. Um, she na pa pa na and na take your ins. Most. We just just like with ourselves, we have to be careful what we what we give them. Um, do, you know, study up on what do you, what do animal, what do, what does a cat usually eat? Like in the wild, what does a dog usually eat in the wild? What is, you know, what's their natural inclination? It's probably not fruits and vegetables. It's probably not byproduct. It's probably not, you know, all this other stuff ground up, uh, any kind of, I don't know, the, all the fillers and stuff they put in. So, um, you guys should probably know that also, if you go to a feed store, a lot of times they'll give you little tiny samples that you can bring home and see if your animal likes instead of wasting a big bag. A lot of people don't know that either. Um, and there, and also for, for pee and poo, there are enzymes, there are products that are like liquid enzymes that you spray on or pour onto the thing and it eats up and, and kills the, um, the scent of it even. 
So there are a couple of good products um, for that, but you could go to a feed store and find out. You don't, you don't use like soap and water and stuff like that. Cause then it smells, still smells like pee. And on top of it, there's a smell of soapy s- stuff that they don't like. So they'll keep peeing on it to get rid of it. It's like, <clears throat> okay. Um, does, yeah. Oh, okay. So somebody said my kitty has lymphoma and I was wondering if, if it would, if it was maybe her food or maybe the thing that goes with here, uh, that it might have caused it. I get a yes. Um, was it the food or was it the jab? Was it the food or the jab, the jab or the food? It was the jab more. It's like they put the lymphoma in the jab and give it to you. Here, come prevent it by taking it. <laughs> That's pretty much what's going on. You know, that whole idea, oh, we put a little bit of it in there so that your body builds up a defense to it. It's like, no, you put a little bit in there because you want us to have it. <laughs> okay. Does the food we are, yeah, but, 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 a message from our pets, a message. Okay. And then we're going to do, first, you're going to do a message from pets and then message for wild animals from wild animals message from pets, please. Um, I'm seeing fresh, fresh, freshly filled, um, water and food without slobber in it, without, you know, um, if you could change out their water fairly frequently for cats, they like moving water, you know, trickling water. So, um, maybe have a fountain, uh, or some kind of little, you know, thing that makes it interesting for them to drink. Um, um, but yeah, keeping their dish full, don't give them too many treats to, to where they get fat. Um, they do recognize when they do get overweight, um, they do recognize that they need to to not have as many treats. So as much as you feel like you're really hurting their feelings, they will accept it because they know that it's the healthier thing to do. And especially If you take the time to explain to them and show them, you know, kind of thinning down and feeling better, feeling happier, you know, so give them some images and ideas. Um, And by the way, when I'm talking to animals, in case you guys were wondering about this, when I'm talking to animals, they're giving me images and feelings and they're showing me the pain that they have and, and they're pointing things out in an intuitive way that I'm then translating as if it's English. So I'm a translator so that it's not like they're speaking English to me and I'm just like conveying the same thing. Although it is kind of like that sometimes, actually, it is, is very much like that. Sometimes some of them are more articulate than others. Um, but anyway, um, <clears throat> any other messages that the, that the pets want to convey they they do like being left alone sometimes especially with sounds of nature or like I always love the idea of of like for cats having a cat enclosure so they can be out in nature but not have to worry about any um you know predators or anything that would be after them or any cars hitting them or them getting in fights with neighborhood cats and, you know, giving you a huge bet bill or them getting a disease from touching noses with another cat. Um, Yeah, they, a lot of them are bored. So a lot of them actually would like either more toys or more training or just know what to do or be taken on walks more um, like daily walks, at least a lot of you take, take walks, like even twice a day, which is great. Um, a lot of them feel also that sometimes when you leave them in somebody else's care, that other person doesn't care about them. So try to be conscientious of who you leave them with or who watches them while you're gone and that they give them the same care and concern that you would. Um, and even have somebody come into your home rather than take them somewhere. Like maybe have a pet sitter visit your home or, or stay at your place or something like that. Um, anything else? 
some of them feel insecure that you don't love them because you guys just don't speak the same language. So <clears throat> one way to show that an animal that you love them is to act like they do sometimes like um, try to observe them and see the ways that they show you affection and maybe show them the same or um, mimic the sounds that they make towards you. And you'll see a little surprise on their face. Like, Oh, you just spoke my language. You just said, I love you. So like um, an example would be, okay. So um, cats do this when they, when they want to show you that they trust you and that they'll, they're willing to be vulnerable with you. They will do what's called the slow blink. And it looks like this. Okay. So that was, I love you. Um, if that, and it may be a variation of that. It may be like, oh, I love you so much like this, you know? Um, the other night there, there, the other day, there was a, a, a chaotic moment with one of my cats and um, there, there, it was, it was a, it was a crazy, it was a crazy incident. <laughs> and I think she just felt really, really bad because I didn't, I was, I was pretty like, uh, like jarred by it a bit. Like, oh my gosh, what the heck was that? You know? And she came in here into my den and I was sitting here and I look over and at her, she's just sitting there just looking at me. And so I looked at her and she, and she went like this. And then she even tipped her head back. Like, do you see how closed my eyes are? <laughs> and she did it like three times. Like, okay. In case you didn't see that. Huh? Okay. Mm, mm, see them see them they're really closed <laughs> and I had to like I was watching the whole thing going oh my gosh this is so amazing like what she's making such a point of it it was it was such an exaggerated slow blink uh, that I wish that I had had could have had it on film because it was it was it was spectacular it was absolutely amazing and, you know, it kind of made me chuckle. And I was like, okay, we're good. You know, we're good. <laughs> That's like, that would have been the equivalent of somebody, you know, that you love coming and crawling up on your lap and kissing on you. Like, I'm sorry. You know, I just get a little crazy sometimes kind of thing. So um, yeah. So they're watch speak their own language, you know, make their own vocal sounds, um, you know, do things in the, that show, you know, that show affection that, you know, that they actually feel good about it. When a cat feels good, their tail goes up. So if you do something and your cat's tail goes up or you speak to them in a certain tone and their tail goes up, like one of my cats, I'll be, I'll be in the house and she'll, she'll come in and for like from another room or whatever, and she'll just, and I'll be like on one side of the house, she'll come this way and she'll just be like walking real slowly into the room and her tail is kind of down and she just kind of relaxed, right? A relaxed posture. And I'll go, ah, you know, and I'll be like, it's you. And she just goes, ah, like she gets so excited. Her eyes get big and she trots and her tail goes straight up and she trots over to me. So, you know, that's, you know, that, that's how you, that's how, you know, just watch for that stuff and pay attention. Um, okay. A message. Oh, wait, I feel like pulling one of the pet cards, some more of the pet cards too. Some of you need to know that I'd like to sleep with you or cuddle with you. If I felt more comfortable, see, they, they, they're not sure. I'm sure it'll happen in time. I just wanted you to know that I feel the same way too. I'm just a little shy. <laughs> oh, cute. <laughs> when you talk to me, it helps when you send me images with your mind. That's how us animals talk. There you go. I think I could really use some discipline and or training. I feel like I'd feel more confident if I knew what it was that you wanted me to do in various situations. I'd know better what to do and would feel more confident. Yeah. Okay. I think I need desensitization around this fear so that I'm not so afraid anymore. So if your animal is afraid of something, um, it's a good idea to make that thing a positive thing. And um, I can't, I mean, I could spend so much time on that right now. Um, or we could do a private session. We could do a remote reading and I could tell you how to desensitize your animals to all kinds of different things. But the idea is if they're afraid of something, 
you need to turn their idea of that something around. For, for that matter, you could do this with people or with your partner too. So, um, but you can desensitize them that, to where they're not afraid of that thing anymore. So don't just live with them being afraid of something and just say, oh, they're always afraid of that. Do something about that. Um, oh, I love the many ways that you make me feel special. Thank you. Um, I also feel like a lot of your, um, a lot of your pets who've passed away miss you and love you tremendously and are on the other side um, helping you. And a lot of them really want to see you happy and want to see you with somebody who makes you feel special. Um, and they're helping kind of guide that along as best they can. They're even guiding along the animal of your partner, of your future partner. Isn't that funny? I just got that. Like you might have a cat that passed away and say you like a guy who's got a dog. Like the cat is going to the dog and encouraging the dog to do this, to get your person to come closer to you, blah, 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 blah. So that's really sweet. Um, and you may see those animals again when you get over to the 5D New Earth. When you talk to me, oh, wow, look at that same one again about sending an image. Sending images is important to them. Who's in charge, you or me? I need you to be the leader or I start feeling insecure. So that's, yeah, that's very true. And remember too, that like, if you're walking a dog, your dog will feel your emotions through that leash, <laughs> you know? So if you're afraid, your dog's going to get really nervous. Like, oh, oh, oh. Um, okay. So, so you have to, you have to be confident. You have to go out there feeling more confident so that your dog can relax and be like, okay, you're in charge. You got this. Um, and know what you're going to do if you encounter a problem. Like think these things through with animals. You got to think any everything through before you're in the situation. You don't want to find yourself lost in it and go, oh man, I didn't even realize that could have happened or whatever. Try to try to think it through. <laughs> what could possibly happen and what would I do if it did, you know? Okay, a message from wild animals, please. Hashi napahapana taike. They actually are, are looking forward to being friends with us again. They're kind of, I feel them kind of peeking out of the bushes or peeking out of the woods. Like, you know, I kind of want to be that human's friend, but I don't know how that would go. So they're, but they're feeling drawn to us. They're feeling kind of um, like, I really kind of do want that to happen. I'm real, real curious. They don't like the wildfire. In fact, I'm going to do a blessing right now to help. Um, I had written this down to a light language blessing for animals healing, please, especially those who've lost their homes due to wildfires and ask their forgiveness for abuse at human hands. So we're going to do that right now. Taina Shishin, that takes. The Pampuma and I. Ha la san se she na ha pu puma an. Ha la kirina te he she she la ge kin san se. Ha la em pum puma an. Tata ye he in san se she ke e. Ha a la a puma a ke in tatais. She she he e na a kins. I'm telling them that there were some really bad people and really bad beings that were influencing humans to be numb to killing things and that, that they were like, they didn't know any better. They were taught certain things like, uh, you know, even becoming psychopaths and crazy, like these bad, bad behaving humans are not, it's not normal. It's not the norm for human beings. Human beings are supposed to be more compassionate and loving and, and peaceful. And I'm apologizing for our, the fact that, that, you know, that, 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 in explaining to them that these people, they did, they didn't know that they'd been brainwashed all this time to treat animals in a, in a, in a subpar way. And that animals are just, they're choked up. Like they, they've been devastated by humans, devastated. So they're really appreciating this message. And they're, they're like, oh my gosh, that makes sense. Um, it's, I, yeah, the whole message is they know not what they do. They know not what they do. And the animals are like, oh, wow. 
Popo Homa Anatai Insans. And I was saying there are a group of people that are called humanitarians that are, that are going to be, many of them are going to do projects to help restore the wildlife and, um, and help to mend the relationship between wild animals and human beings. And they're like, oh, good. Shishi na tetain ke pumama ana ai. I just said, it's all going to be okay. And I saw like some um, Bambi, some little, little deer, like lay, like kind of nestle down, like, okay. Okay. Like feeling peaceful. Ah, Okay. Whew. Um, all right. So I guess we're going to just continue on. Look at the timestamps. If you ever think a video of mine is too long, just look at the timestamps and go to whichever ones you want. A lot of you put me in the background uh, while you're doing other things, which is perfect. Um, and for that matter, I have Delta waves in my voice. So if you have trouble sleeping, you might just want to listen to me and it'll probably knock you right out. <laughs> okay. So the next question is, and these are the nature questions. Oh, they start over here, actually. All right. Is, oh. Yeah, this is interesting. Is sunscreen safe or is it poisonous? Is sunscreen safe or is it poisonous? I feel like both. Um, I feel like there are both. Um, are there sun sunscreens that are okay, that are, that are good? Yes. Um, are sunglasses blocking good stuff from the sun? Because animals seem fine without them, right? So are sunglasses blocking good stuff from the, from the sun? Oh yeah, absolutely. In fact, um, if sunglasses are harmful, how long would it take? Okay. Um, here's the cool thing too. This is something I just learned from Shanti that she kind of felt into intuitively years ago. And when she said it, I was like, oh my gosh, because uh, a lot of you know that I had skin cancer. I went to a, a, a tanning bed. Back then I was laying out all the time um, out in the sun, but I also was going to, it started going to a tanning bed and I ended up having a mole that ended up being cancerous. And I think it was triggered by the tanning bed looking back because, you know, it made me a little bit nervous about getting in the sun because, you know, being with fair skin, I always, you know, sunburn and stuff like that. However, when she explained this, all of a sudden I was like, Oh my gosh, that makes so much sense. And I'm about to feel into this and see if it's, if it's true, but she says that she, she got the idea or maybe, I don't know which part of this is what she gathered in research or which part is intuitive, but the idea is, and this makes so much sense that our eyes are designed to assess the light in any given moment, the light, the light in the room, the light from the sun, the light you know, outside or like low light, high light, you know, our eyes assess that, which, you know, the pupils dilate and they contract, right? So it makes perfect sense. And what they, what your eyes can do is put out a signal to the body. Okay. There is a lot of light. Let's put some protection in the skin to protect it from burning, right? We are naturally made. God makes us naturally able to do anything that there, there is that we need to do. We're all completely fully equipped. Um, so the idea is that it's, it's, if you don't have sunglasses, your eyes will start to adjust again. The sunglasses actually make it seem like you're in a dark room. So your, so your eyes don't put out that alert for protection all over your body. So you get burned. So they're doing it on purpose with, as with all of these things, right? So we're getting cancer and all kinds of things because and getting burned um, because we were wearing sunglasses in a sense, because your, our body was not getting the signal that it was even hot outside. I mean, that felt like maybe the heat, but 
It's our eyes that regulate that, that send out the sunblock, the natural sunblock in us. So isn't that just incredible? And I was like, oh my, I'm so relieved because I love the sun so much. And I've been naturally inclined to not to wear my sunglasses lately. And I didn't know why. And this is leading into like another question for, for let's just check that real quick. Um, is it, is, is this idea or this theory true? Yes. Is it true that if we stop using sunglasses for how, how much time? About two, three weeks, more like three weeks, three weeks of not using sunglasses, you could feel safe not to use sunblock anymore. But we're not talking about extended, extended times. I mean, Shanti said that she's practiced it for years and has had no problem at all with, with burning anymore. But um, she did go out in the sun for like six hours, I think. And then she, she did burn. So, I mean, that was really kind of pushing it, I guess. But, um, and who knows what that was about. Maybe she didn't have enough water. Or maybe she didn't, you know, I um, mean, who knows what contributed to that. But anyway, um, so so if we, if we stop using sunglasses for like three weeks ish, um, could we feel safe to go outside and not get burned? Yes. We could be in the sun and not get burned. Yes. For, uh, I just heard for extended times. Yeah. So is it true that the sunglasses were being used to burn us? Yeah. And that the sunblock, most sunblocks are very unhealthy for us. Yes. Okay. There we go. I mean, I thought that sounded true to me. Um, the other thing that we talked about was that there are, for a while there were, there were two suns and I remember that. And I remember the sun feeling like it was like, it was, it was too hot. It was like scalding hot. It was like offensive. Right. Um, and, and the theory is that there was a fake sun put up, um, for a while and it's not there anymore. So it's like, they, it's like the bad guys like put up some kind of fake sun that was har really harmful to us. And then ended up having to take it down because everybody was noticing that there were two sons. So um, is this true? Yes. Is it true that there was a fake sun put in the sky by the bad people? Yes. Was it um, to mess with us? Yes. <clears throat> Did they have to take it down because too many people noticed? Yes. Okay. All right. That's what we thought. Um. Is it safe to stare into the sun in increasing amounts of time, like in sun gazing? Yes, yes, yes. It can be incredibly beneficial. You could buy a book if you want to be real safe about it. But um, I, I, I haven't even read a book or anything, but what I felt intuitively is just like, uh, or even I may have heard it by people who do it or something like that. But basically you can, you can kind of like, eat chi from the sun and that can be your, your nutrition. So you could live off of sun gazing and, and air. Um, if you, if you needed to, you could acclimate to that, but basically try in the, in the, if you have like morning sun and evening sun where you are, or you could drive to a park or, you know, do something. So you can do that. Perhaps if you're really diligent about it, it could be very beneficial to you, but Try to gaze toward the sun as try to get as close to the sun as you can and gaze like next to the sun, like the sun is here and you're here and you're looking here. So it's so you're getting the benefit of the sunlight in your in your eyes because uh, the natural sun is a portal. And it's it's even I feel I see downloads like like you're getting chi downloads even from staring at the sun. Um, but you could just gaze as it. I mean, that's why they say gaze, because you're not like staring at it. You're just like gazing over that direction as close as you can get. Um, and I would do that for like five to 10 minutes, maybe five minutes at first, build up to 10 minutes. Some people do it longer than that, but you could read a book on it if you really want to get into it. But it has incredible, from what I understand, it has incredible health benefits and even helps with ascension and everything. So if you're having ascension symptoms, maybe you want to try some sun gazing. Okay, um, are the bad guys um, putting toxic things in the soil that we buy um, to plant our veggies and flowers in that are harmful? Um, and, and when will this change if they are? are? We can pretty much guess the answer is yes, right? Jeez. 
You can point to anything in your room. Toxic, 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 toxic. Um, okay, so is it true that they've been putting toxic things in the soil? Yes. Uh, so you want to try to get organic everything right now. Um, and even the organic things are questionable sometimes. So is it true that even organic things are questionable sometimes? Yes. Okay. So as natural as possible, um, as from, as from nature as possible, <laughs> sometimes that word natural means of human remains. So I don't like that word sometimes, but, uh, <laughs> like natural flavoring, for example, uh, so, but uh, organic is organic soil better though than the regular soil. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Fertilizers can be really bad. They just said fertilizers can be really bad, but you could watch people on Instagram and some, um, YouTube videos where you could come up with natural fertilizers that are great. One of the fertilizers that I just learned about the other day had to do with oatmeal, like or soaking, uh, soaking oats in water and something else mixing that together and letting it soak for a while. And then you just, you know, pour that or spray that on your veggies and stuff. Um, so there are really great natural ways of fertilizing your plants and even protecting them against bugs. All right. Um, have chemtrails hampered the thriving of our gardens and lands? Absolutely. Yes. And our, and our animals and our wildlife and everything. They, they, it's it's hampered everything. It's like a big old damp blanket put over everything. Um, are the chemtrails still really bad? No. Okay, good. Uh, I've seen some black chemtrails lately. Are the black chemtrails, are they a good or a bad thing? I actually see good um, ben for our benefit. Is it is it true that they are being used to like... Um, uh, apparently in the firmament, is it the firmament, the big dome that's over us, the big ice dome that's over us? Um, <clears throat> there is apparently some holes that are being seen that they're using. They might be using chemtrails to kind of camouflage, kind of put a fog over that area. So you don't notice there's a big hole in the sky. <laughs> the firmament is the firmament going to be taken away. Yeah. The firmament's going to be taken away or taken off or broken or whatever. Um, I don't know how they'll remove the firmament, but it is going to, the firmament is going to be removed. Yes. Is the firmament going to be removed? That, that was a weird thing. Cause I kind of got to know for a second, is the firmament actually going to be removed? Yeah. So when the firmament's removed, from what I understand, we're going to be able to see a lot more of the earth. There's like a lot more We're We're just like um, quarantined in this, in this uh, bubble or in this dome. Um, cause these people were so bad. Um, so, and they were putting so many toxic things out there, you know, that they couldn't allow us to spread all over. But anyway, once this is all taken care of and starts to, you know, we do a cleanup job and everything, then we'll be allowed to venture out into the other areas, I guess. Anyway, is it true that the chemtrails are being used to kind of camouflage or cover up those areas with holes? Some of them. Yes. Some of them. What are the black? Oh, it feels like the black chemtrails are partially charcoal. Some substance like, is it like charcoal? Yeah, it's like absorbing something bad. It's like taking away some of the, oh, that makes sense. If they're spraying charcoal in the air. Yeah, because look at what charcoal does, right? It just pulls all toxins out. They said, yep. So that's cool. Um, so it's a good thing. It's a cleanup. It's a, I feel like it's a cleanup. Okay. Um, what are the, yeah. What can we do to help the plants and animals under our care in the best ways? Talk to them is one of the things. Um, I talk to my plants all the time. I'm like, hey, look at you. You're growing a tomato. Wow. It's starting to get some color. Look at you. You're getting big. And I could feel the joy in the plant, like responding to me. <gasps> she notices, you know, um, and I try to be real quiet. <laughs> so the neighbors aren't like, oh, crazy person talking to her plants <laughs> until they know better that they should be also be talking to their plants. 
you know, those of us who are, who are, you know, can make it the norm to be normal. Um, it's going to help some of these other people kind of break their resistance too. You know, like I was talking about the neighbor, they kind of looked at me funny when I was sitting against the tree. I mean, I'm going out of my way to be like super friendly and waving and, and we get along great anyway. We always have, but I'm just like, Hey guys, how you doing? And, you know, and they, you know, look at, they, they, you know, <laughs> they're going to be eventually like, you know, she's really sweet. Like who, who cares if she's sitting out by the tree, you know, they'll tell anybody else who's saying that, like, just shut up. She's cool. You know? <laughs> so that's what we got to do is just kind of like erode away at their egos a little bit by a little bit and kind of break them down until finally they're just like, everybody's all like, I ah, just let people be how they are, you know, no big deal. Let's just, in fact, why don't we go sit under a tree? How about we go, you know, sit on the back porch and, and do this, that, or the other thing, whatever, you know, they might start implementing some of these things. So you can influence them instead of them influencing you. You know what I mean? Um, I was going to say, you know what I'm saying? but <laughs> It came, came out of my mouth weird. Um, Will we do to do? Will we be able to play a frequency to help our gardens grow better? Yes, we we can now. Um, and I feel like something like crystal. You can put crystals in your garden too with intention, and it'll help. Um, is there anything else that our plants or animals need from us? I feel like water supply sometimes. Some birds are really hot and they don't have any water. So if you guys could put out bird baths and keep it clean, that would be appreciated. Um, for that matter, bird food, but you got to put out the kind of check with a, a wildlife place or something about the birds, because it's really easy to give them the wrong kind of food in the wrong way and the wrong kind of feeder. You basically want it to be thin and flat and able to like get through, um, like stuff can get through it kind of thing. Don't leave it out there if it's moist, cause it'll get moldy and then they eat the mold and get sick or they get conjunctivitis. Um, you know, so really know what you're doing. If you're going to be putting food out there and stuff, know the, the types of feed to give the birds and the way to feed them and just uh, try to be conscientious about it and watch it on a regular basis and empty it out and put fresh stuff in on a regular basis and just kind of keep your eye on it so that everything's okay. Um, anything else? <laughs> I'm not really getting anything now. They just said, thank you. They said, thank you though, for, for caring. Um, can we have a message from the lawns? Huh. Hey lawns. How you doing? They're actually kind of proud. They actually feel like, don't we, don't we look pretty? Don't we look pretty? That's interesting. I wouldn't have expected that. Um, did the, do you guys want to, to grow longer? Do you, would you like to grow longer instead of getting a haircut? <laughs> do you, do you, do you mind? Do you mind getting your haircut? Sometimes some of us, some like, does it hurt? Uh, it feels like a headache to them. It feels more like a headache, like, eh, like an irritation. It, it's not like, ah, oh, it hurts. It's, but they would prefer to grow naturally and to grow long, but they understand. Um, and they, uh, some of them actually do take pride in, in like, like some of them love, like the adoration or the admiration that they get from people when they're like, Ooh, what a beautiful lawn. They sense and they can feel that. And they're like, oh, um, but at the same time, it's kind of, um, I think that they, do, would you prefer um, getting kind of a haircut or, or being long? It doesn't actually feel like they have a particular preference. They would love to just be left alone, but at the same time, they don't get the admiration. So they appreciate the admiration. So I guess their, their ideal situation would be that they're long, you know, they get to grow as long as they want to. And we ooh and ah at them. <laughs> they said, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's really cute. <laughs> and they love when we lay on them. 
They love when we lay on them. I try to be considerate to you. If, if, if there's a lawn and there's a sidewalk and the lawn is like frozen, when we walk on it, it could break the, the grass. So I try to like go around it. Or if you send out a message that you're about to walk on the grass, like, hey, just so you know, I'm about to walk there. They'll actually, they put out some kind of a chemical that allows them to be more flexible while you walk on them. So try to alert them and let them know before, like, I almost always say that I'm about to step on you. I'm about to come through, you know, <laughs> so they can be like, okay, woo, you know, <laughs> that way I'll bend instead of break. So, uh, you know, try to, try to warn them of things. Um, maybe for that matter, if you're about to mow the lawn, Hey, we're about to mow the lawn. So they can be like, okay, woo. They'll take, they'll like take their feeling part down in the, in the stem of the grass down further so that when this comes off, it's not going to hurt. Right. Not as much. There you go. Well, there you go. Just alert them and let them know what you're doing and you can feel better about it. Okay, cool. Yeah. They'll push the, like the dead cells up toward the top for you to cut them off. Kind of like the dead ends of, of your hair that get cut off. Oh, this is so interesting. Okay. Um, can we get a message from the trees? Now the trees are another whole fascinating. We could do a whole show on trees. Um, can, can we get a message from trees, please? Trees love hugs. Trees love interaction with humans. Anytime you guys like lay against them, um, sit against them, hug them, any anything like that, build a, a fort in them. They're like, um, they're also kind of spies in a sense that they have a network and their roots go everywhere underneath us. And they are actually even, um, they're listening. I feel like a kind of listening to a vibration so they can communicate what's going on. And they, they all over the world, these guys can network all over the world, uh, communicating with each other as to what's going on everywhere. So it's pretty, pretty neat. They're kind of, yeah, they're spying. Um, they, it's more like they they have a pulse on how the earth is, is doing and how humans are doing by just watching and observing that way and reporting to everyone for that matter. Like if, if a, if a, if a tree down the block is suffering and other trees have a, like extra nutrients that can help that one, they send their nutrients over to it to help it. Isn't that cool? So they're just amazing, amazing creatures. That's all they wanted to say. You is, is to create a relationship with them and touch them. Um, oh, they're making my eyes feel weird right now. They can improve eyesight. Oh, my whole body is totally going through something right now. It's almost like you guys take niacin. See how I'm turning a little bit red? They're turning my body like red right now, like niacin. I wonder if they do for us what niacin does for us. I just got to guess. Find out what niacin does. The kind that makes you flush. Find out what that does. It feels like the uh, trees can give you that, whatever that is. That's incredible. So nature has all of our answers, you guys. Nature has everything that we need. Thank you. And I'm still, my eyes still feel weird. Do you guys fix eyes? Yes. Okay. That they, this, they're, they said that they're a wealth of knowledge that they could, oh, they know that I have an issue with my eyes. So they're trying to fix it. So they're trying to say, whatever your ailment or whatever you want to fix, they're going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever you want to fix, then you just go uh, talk to a tree and you can even ask the tree, what do I need? What can you give me something that I need? And they'll do the same for you that they would do for the neighbor tree. Can you guys supply like minerals and vitamins and things like that through your roots? Like to us, could you somehow, what? Do you mean to tell me, Trace minerals, vitamins, all the nutrients that a human being needs, they could get from sitting under a tree or, or being with a tree, being one with a tree coming to you guys. They're saying, yeah. So you don't even need your supplements. Just go lay under a tree 
or go be part of a tree. Energetic. It's energetic vitamins. It's not, you know, it's not the ones that you ingest, but um, energetically you'll get what you need from them that way. Holy cow. I was not expecting that. Oh my gosh. Okay. This has been quite a thing. Okay. So there's just a couple questions left. Will we start using alternative materials to build homes with like hempcrete? There is such thing as hempcrete. It's a combination of hemp and concrete or a type of concrete that is hemp. Um, and then there's concrete foam that's much, much lighter and better um, to build your home with. Um, and, and these other alternative ways in materials to build our homes with is actually um, pest resistant and fire resistant. So let's start using these alternative uh, materials. Let's insist on it, <laughs> you know? Can we have a message from flowers? Oh, they love to brighten our day. They like live to, to put a smile on our faces. So anytime you can look over and appreciate a flower and say something sweet to it, oh my gosh, it's like, okay, I can die now and be happy. Like it, it, that's all like, it just loves that. Um, has she cheeky that I am on? Um, they're like, you don't have to grow us and cut us, you can just take your person to us and have them appreciate us while we're alive. <laughs> like, you don't have to cut us and put us in a vase or whatever, you know. Well, a lot of people like to have the vases in their homes of flowers to bring it inside, you know, because they don't have flowers inside. Um, well, maybe that's one thing we can incorporate into our homes, too, is having flowers that can live in the shade. Or we have like a, a like a sunlight that comes down right on a spot in the living room that has flowers. Like a, we can make these little like, a, you know, like we could have the, co the concrete foam or whatever come up to like a base type shape that has soil in it. And then there's there's a whole thing of flowers that can blossom. Wouldn't that be cool? And then a, a skylight, like one of those like like whole like little skylights like this can just beam right down on that on those flowers, just be blooming. All. And maybe we can make some flowers that bloom all year round and everything. They would love that. That'd be awesome. And they'd love the attention. Okay. Um, I mean, there are other things we could give each other as gifts that would brighten each other's days without them being flowers that are dead. Um, so, yeah. Shoshe not taike. But they also do recognize and they feel it like a noble cause to be given as flower gifts, though, too. So they want us to know that, to not feel bad necessarily because they... They're like, yeah, if we're going to die, then I'd die for that cause. I would, I would love to put a smile on someone's face. So um, they're kind of sacrificial that way. They also have a song, and I'm seeing them go like this. I think there's flower music. I think that there's, I know there's mushroom music. Like a lot of things, if you put a... Um, a little device on it, you could hear the song and the sounds that they make. They sing a song. In fact, I'm feeling on another level, like if you were to be out in the mountains and you would, you could hear all the flowers making their sounds, like singing their songs on, an, on a whole other level. I'm hearing it. And it's really beautiful. People don't hear it. But birds hear it. <gasps> Birds are chirping to the sound of this of the uh, flower singing too. They're all singing together. It's like a big symphony, and we're only hearing the birds, but it's the flowers and the trees. Like, and I feel like the trees put off like a humming sound, like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the flowers are like, Bye. and the birds are like, ding, 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 ding. oh my gosh, that's so crazy. The water makes a sound too. It's kind of a tin, tinny type kind of sound. Wow, this is cool, you guys. Rocks are making sound. They're all, all of it is making sound. 
all of it is making sound that we don't hear. It's really beautiful. Now I got to go out in nature and go listen to it all. Because what they're showing me right now is so beautiful. I oh, will hear it in the new earth. I think we're going to hear more of it in the new earth. Okay, so a light language blessing for Mother Nature's healing. Okay. And then we're done. Shishi na opoma na taike na hai laike na te. Shishi la na poma ma an. Te te la ena ai. Eke na she na an. They, Mother Nature, very much, much looks forward to taking back the controls when it comes to the weather. She would very much like to feel the relief of somebody not messing with her. She feels a lot of those weapons are being taken away or have been dismantled or things like that. She wants to thank the light workers, Aaron. <laughs> who are consciously and like purposefully like making that part of their mission to help mother earth and all these different areas to kind of uh, neutralize the, those weapons that were being used and things like that, making them ineffective and break down. Um, so she can get back to, to creating heaven on earth. She said, she said, Oh my gosh, heaven on earth, heaven on earth. Dude, that's going to be the name of this talk. We're creating heaven on earth. We're going to get back to the way that things were meant to be. Okay. All right, you guys have a beautiful day. This was a really fun one for me to do. I, I, I love this subject. So um, yeah, enjoy, enjoy your weekend. Big hug to you. And I'll talk to you next time I make one of these. Bye. Mm -hmm.